Well, depending on who you ask, this guy is either a medical pioneer or a medical renegade, offering new hope or false hope to millions. He's Dr. Paolo Zamboni, the man behind a new theory on multiple sclerosis that's blowing conventional thinking out of the water. I mean, one group even compared him in a press release today to early explorers who tried to prove the world wasn't flat. And today, Dr. Zamboni is in Canada and on our show. So here's what we want to connect. Do you see this as, as a revolution, a revolutionary treatment? Meet the man behind the new hope. He says his MS treatment could change everything. So why then are Canadians having to leave the country to get it? But some of us, we feel our time is running out. Hi, I'm Mark Kelly and welcome to the show. Well, it's a debilitating disease that affects between 50,000 and 75,000 Canadians, the fifth highest rate in the world. There's no cure and few treatments. But now, for people with multiple sclerosis, there's new hope. All thanks to an Italian doctor named Paolo Zamboni. His experimental treatment, a surgery to improve blood flow through veins in the neck, has changed how many people look at the disease. And though it's no, not widely available in Canada, some say it's not proven yet, the procedure has made Zamboni a medical superstar. Tens of thousands of people are expected to take part in an online conference he's attending in Toronto tomorrow. And Canadians with MS are finding ways to have the surgery in other countries. Well, I spoke with Dr. Zamboni earlier today. You say you're just a physician, yeah. but um, you've started something that looks, sounds and feels more like a revolution. The, the, the people, the demand for people who want this treatment. Do you see this as, as a revolution, a revolutionary treatment? Uh, I think that uh, what is uh, revolutionary is that uh, we know from the first time of research in multiple sclerosis a relationship between venous system and multiple sclerosis. Here in Hamilton, which is nearby here, they're going to be doing test trials for this. Yeah. They have 100 places available. 22,000 people have applied for those positions. I can understand this. This change of experience is so amazing that I can understand if you should be an MS sufferer, you want to try. People want hope. Yes. Uh, I am also sure that the great proportion of people who will undergo to this treatment I don't know exactly the proportion, but certainly we'll have uh, an improvement in quality of life. Uh, in, in a great proportion of patients, we have uh, a long-lasting remission of the disease. I do not know more than this, because I tried the first operation was performed by my group uh, on December 11, 2006. So it's still new. Relatively new in terms of, uh, of medical yes, science. Yes, it's, it's new, but uh, uh, we, we com I communicated this only 18 months of mean follow-up to be sure to not give false hope to people. But that is the criticism, and you've heard the criticism that it hasn't been tested by time, you need more clin clinical trials, you need more research, and until then, there is a hesitation to endorse this. Do you think that's wrong? I completely agree, but we need a further research. This is a science is under progress. Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, but you also, I but cannot you... accept that you criticize me because uh, I communicate a discovery. You don't like your, you don't like your critics, do you? I think that what we did is right and uh, we offer uh, our experience to everybody want to continue research we want to sharing want to share knowledge with us and also is interested in multi-center trials because also a single center is not a good way but at the beginning you are alone people don't have the patience to wait. 
and science does take time. But people right now, they want help immediately. Canadians are going to Poland, they're going to India, they're going to get that treatment right away. What do you say to those people who won't wait for the trials, who won't wait for more research? In my personal opinion, I am an Italian, I am not a Canadian, but I think that government uh, could offer the treatment uh, instead of uh, hope uh, travel. Mm -hmm. And this is really uh, uh, a duty of uh, the government. You, you're, you were inspired and motivated to help your own wife. Yes, this is certainly the, the beginning of the research. And how is she now? She is going very well. So you've, you've helped the, one of the most important patients to you then? Yes, but now I want to help all the others. Well, they're looking for your help. Thank you. Thank you. Well, as we mentioned, MS strikes Canadians more often than almost anywhere else. You can see the prevalence of MS worldwide at cbc.ca. The 2008 Atlas of Multiple Sclerosis shows the countries with higher rates in darker colours. In Canada, it strikes 240 out of every 100,000 people, with women twice as likely as men to be diagnosed. Well, back in February on this program, we spoke with MS patient Jamie Chalmers, and he made it clear that for a person who struggles every day, Dr. Zamboni's research offers a beacon of hope. Here's an excerpt. In March of 2008, Jamie, I'm sorry to tell you, you have MS. Originally, I was, what is MS? I didn't even know what MS was. I have no life right now. And that's one of the reasons why so many people are so desperate right now. Hope is the uh, capital word in our world right now. And um, Dr. Zamboni is an angel in our opinion. He's been sent to us. Um, and he, his findings are so true. He's going to give me my life back. Um, the surgery makes so much sense. And I'm going to get that life back. I'm going to experience the experience you should have in your 30s. Okay, so I'm going to have it in my 40s now. I'm going to have it all back. I said basically thank you, Dr. Zamboni, for giving me my hope back. Um, and he just approached me and he kind of did a little like that. And he's like, I do this for you. If it turns out to be the cure, and at the same time, if it doesn't, turn out, at least I tried. At least I tried. And in, in the meantime, it's giving so many people hope. And that word, that H-O-P-E word, that's what we have. And I can't wait.